Yeah, it was the application. Um, thank you very much. Well, um, I'm, uh, as I was saying before, I'm pleased to be with you in this uh, in this uh, workshop, uh, science being workshop again. First of all, uh, just a few words about myself. I'm not very good at talking about me, but I'm going to try to do myself uh, the better I can. Uh, well, my name is uh, Professor uh, Jorge J. Palacios. Um, I am a PhD in neurosciences. I am, I am a neuroscientist and I specialize in brain mapping. Uh, well, this is uh, uh, just a, a brief uh, resume of myself and uh, my last publication. I am going to talk about it, about it just a few. A few seconds. It is called Deep Learning Assisted Biofeedback, which is going to be the new way of doing uh, biofeedback, QEEG biofeedback. In fact, HD QEEG biofeedback. Uh, this um, uh, uh, public publication was made in the book that you are looking at the right of your uh, screen which is uh, uh, most, uh, the most recent publication related uh, to um, uh, intelligent systems dedicated to the biosignal uh, analysis. Uh, <clears throat> since uh, many time uh, ago, uh, my wife and me um, create the uh, center that you are looking in uh, your screen. It is called Biofeedback Center here in Mexico City, in, <clears throat> in America. We are the founders, as you can see the dates. We began doing uh, biofeedback, neurofeedback, QEG biofeedback, and now HD QEG uh, biofeedback <clears throat> since uh, many, many years ago. And I'm, I'm pleased to, to tell you that uh, uh, since uh, some time uh, ago, uh, <clears throat> we establish uh, this um, fruitful uh, relation, partnership relation with Science B. So also in our website, if you want to learn more about uh, <clears throat> biofeedback and neurofeedback systems, you can visit us. It is in Spanish. In a few um, months, it will be also in English. The publication I was talking about is about this, about what you are looking at uh, the screen. Uh, the use of um, deep learning solutions uh, in order to obtain clean EEG segments from raw data and to process them in this uh, uh, type of system, which is a complicated but uh, uh, and a specific uh, net of different nets based on deep learning solutions to uh, administrate uh, the uh, biofeedback uh, process. All this uh, is based in what we call HD. The HD stands for high um, density. And uh, it, it also has a great resolution high resolution, HD, high density, QEEG, quantitative EEG. And of course, as uh, we already know, uh, quantitative EEG comes from the uh, uh, quantitative analysis, uh, online quantitative analysis of the raw data that were collected with the EEG devices. Today, we are going to talk about the fundamentals that are going to lead us and are, are leading us to this type of um, new uh, 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 approaches in biofeedback and the, the also QED biofeedback and also the so-called uh, neurofeedback. So for that, uh, I just decided uh, to talk about the default mode network. And I am going to talk about the approach that is based in one key element 
of the EEG, which is its high temporal resolution. Anytime that you are doing, or if you are going to, when uh, it happens, anytime that uh, you uh, are or were uh, doing uh, uh, EEG, you have to think that you are working with a very powerful tool to, uh, for the analysis of uh, uh, the brain waves. And this uh, tool is, uh, uh, the power of this tool resides in its high temporal resolution. The default mode network, or DMN, uh, is one of the large scale brain networks. It is also known as the default state network, uh, and it is also, uh, well, previously it was known as the resting state of the brain. Uh, it was identified using uh, functional MRI. There are you looking at the screen, uh, uh, you see the, the reference. Uh, this uh, image uh, was also published in Wikipedia based precisely in this uh, publication. And there you are looking in the red spots, you are looking at the high density activity uh, uh, areas of the brain when a person uh, is in this specific state, which is also known as the task negative state. And that means um, that the, the, the brain it is not involved in, in anything specific, like solving um, tasks, for, for example, or uh, um, having a specific interaction with the environment. It was uh, found with this type of work that um, the DMN can be found in uh, between the dorsal medial prefrontal cortex, which is this one, the posterior cingulate cortex, precisely the precuneus. The cuneus is this area, and the precuneus is this one with this white <coughs> spot, which is uh, an element uh, in this type of uh, images that is telling us that the high density a, a metabolism activity is taking place there and the uh, angular gyves. So these are, this is a, a, an axial view and this is a sagittal view and there, here you can see where are the uh, main locations of the most uh, important activity of the, of the DMA, uh, DMN. One important thing is that the uh, traditional initial uh, description of uh, resting state and thus the negative uh, uh, situation of the brain is uh, uh, not precisely the way the DMN is uh, uh, seen today. Because it has been found that uh, the brain is active all the time. Even when we are sleeping, as uh, probably uh, uh, all of you know, and uh, it is active also uh, in this specific state. But uh, there are other ways, there are other ways to uh, uh, study the DMN, and one is with the QEEG, in fact, with the HD QEEG. With the, the straw atlas, which is uh, a specific uh, uh, computational parcellations of the brain based in many, many other atlases, you can uh, see the different uh, areas that are involved precisely in <coughs> the uh, uh, DMN. Here in the image, you are looking at uh, the precuneus area and the uh, area in the uh, dorsal uh, medial prefrontal cortex. <clears throat> but uh, also, you can see 
uh, mm, that there is another way to look at the, uh, the DNA, and this is the one that we are going to present today. This is um, based on the Schaeffer's uh, parcellations, 600 parcellations of the brain of the whole large scale, long scale uh, networks in the brain. We selected, of course, only, and here you are looking at one of the parcellations, which is precisely in preconius. This is an, um, an image generated in a specific environment. I am going to describe just in the next slide, well, in some slides. Um, and this, is, this image was uh, generated in a specific neuroinformatic environment from <clears throat> a real, an actual real MRI. And the power frequency bands were projected into the, uh, uh, this brain model created from that specific MRI. Here, we are looking at the distribution of the activity at the um, uh, 491 uh, seconds in the recording. And it is not an, a, a simple image. This image was obtained with an HD QEEG system, one of 128 channels. But um, we are going to see this uh, um, in a few slides. DMN has, as anything, uh, its, uh, its story. Uh, first of all, it was uh, the pioneer of all, all of our, our work, uh, Hans Berger, the first one that uh, showed uh, uh, that the activity of the brain was taking place in any moment. He was the scientist uh, who discovered and, in fact, labeled alpha uh, uh, rhythm, alpha waves. Later, Sokolov uh, and, he, and his colleagues in the, in the, in the 50s, uh, about uh, um, 20 years uh, later, um, uh, identified um, uh, a great uh, metabolism activity uh, during the uh, supposedly resting state uh, of the brain. Um, in the 90s, the uh, PET scans uh, uh, start looking at the different type of changes that were taking place in the different brain areas when the person was supposed to be in this deactivated uh, condition. In 1995, uh, well, uh, um, in, the, in the human sensory motor system, was uh, identified the resting state uh, connectivity. It, it was made uh, by just a graduate student uh, um, with uh, this uh, contribution. And later, uh, uh, it was uh, the work of Regis who identified precisely um, the uh, uh, then called default mode and what and it happened in 2000. On uh, 2001. Since then, you can just uh, uh, um, type in your in your uh, computer um, DMN default mode network uh, default mode in the brain, and you are going to see a, a lot of references. I, I advise you to to look at the um, uh, scientific reference uh, for that and all the publications. Um, and you are going to see that there's, uh, there's a lot of work with uh, this type of uh, long scale, uh, uh, large scale uh, uh, networks, um, but uh, also with DMN, actually, the uh, different type of changes in DMA in DMN has been related to different type of uh, conditions, like, for example, Alzheimer's and also Mm, uh, autistic spectrum disorder and uh, uh, traumatic brain injury with very specific changes in DMA that can be useful as diagnosis uh, tools. 
Here again, with the Destro Atlas, we are looking at the at two different uh, views. This is the right hemisphere, of course, and <coughs> you are looking at the dorsal medial prefrontal cortex here, <coughs> part of the parcellations that are related to the uh, uh, demon, and, the, and here in this sagittal view, uh, the same in uh, dorsal medial prefrontal cortex and, uh, and, and in the pre and this is a view different. Uh, this one is from the Schaffer uh, Atlas, but uh, um, he has uh, found, in comparison with the straw, he has found more uh, uh, areas, more parcellation, as we call the different type of uh, areas uh, uh, anatomically defined in the in the brain. Functionally and anatomically defined, it is not only the place but the function. And uh, uh, remember that uh, uh, since the appearance of the human connectome in uh, 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 some time ago, 2003, uh, it was found about uh, uh, 200 and uh, uh, um, something, 200 and, and uh, and 10 and 15 areas in the brain. And that was the beginning of a, a great amount of different atlases. One of them is uh, these uh, images that you are going to see. And we are going to work with that, uh, with these images also. In, um, in a phantom view, you are looking at the brain. You are looking at the brain in this, this is the same view that you were uh, looking before, it is a view that was reconstructed from an MRI in a specific neuroinformatic environment. You are uh, looking at the tractography fibers, GRK fibers, the whole amount of fibers, and also you are looking at the, at the parcellations of the Schaffer atlas. Uh, he, uh, this author has uh, many atlases. I work with the most uh, complete atlas with, that has 600 parcellations with 17 brain networks. Uh, you are looking at uh, 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 right and, and left hemispheres and uh, top and the bottom. Uh, in these uh, views you are only looking at the uh, 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 right hemispheres, uh, uh, labels of the uh, default mode. It, it was precise, uh, as you can see, Schaffer, the one that identified other areas uh, that get, are involved uh, with the default uh, mode network, besides the traditional ones that were identified in the, um, in the uh, um, original works with the DMA. And now we are looking at the frontal view and the rear and the back, the occipital part of the brain. Also in the Schaffer Atlas. We are going to present a brief analysis, just a brief. Um, uh, it, it was uh, performed in the neuroinformatics environment it is called a brainstorm, which is an outstanding daily, uh, daily work environment, we can say. And there are the most important references that uh, we are going to use. Of course, the first reference is, is related to the environment. The second one is to the pipeline related to the <clears throat> Uh, analysis of the power frequency bands, and then uh, the analysis of connectivity, and also this is the reference from the atlas that we are going to be using also, just to talk a, a, about a little about the DMN view, uh, analyzed, studied with high density QED of uh, 128 channels. There, you are looking at a very different uh, uh, diagram of EEG position. It is, it is called the 5% electrode system. It has its story since 2001 also, 
So we can say that uh, since uh, then we have 20 year, 22 years uh, with the existence of this system and we are using this uh, 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 electrode placement system for many purposes. And also, remember, it is uh, used for uh, uh, biofeedback, for QED biofeedback. And uh, well, uh, uh, it is, of course, based in the enormous, great, great and base uh, contribution of uh, <clears throat> the uh, uh, 1020 uh, international um, uh, technique uh, that uh, everybody uh, knows, and it, it was uh, that uh, technique was uh, published uh, in uh, 1956, uh, more or less. So uh, um, it has uh, um, been a, ba a base, uh, an important base since then, but. In uh, 2001, um, there was uh, this another contribution based in the uh, um, in the first one that uh, it is go uh, has revolution the uh, uh, way we are studying the brain and we are studying uh, uh, the brain networks uh, also. Well, just a, a quick view to my uh, to my uh, navigator uh, to, to my file uh, uh, um, in my computer. Um, just uh, take a look. Uh, we are going to be in this uh, uh, folder, and uh, we are going to look at the, this database for the uh, 128 channels. There are other channels, of course. 1924, 64. To uh, 128, even in fact, there are even more channels. We can see um, systems of uh, 256, and also we can see systems of <clears throat> 512 channels. And we are going to analyze this uh, 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 this file. All uh, this was obtained with uh, the E Wave <clears throat> uh, 128. Uh, channels. And we obtain this. <clears throat> we are going to see to the, uh, to the preprocessing pre -processing line, uh, uh, which is uh, the pipeline that we uh, um, they use uh, uh, or, or we use on a daily basis in the um, analysis of the uh, uh, recordings. There are you, the, you, there you are looking at the, at the Raw recording, <clears throat> it was pre processed, it is clean. There has been run to obtain this a certain number or, of a specific algorithms, machine learning algorithms that cleans the, the recording of uh, any, any type of uh, artifacts in order to obtain a specific. Uh, um, sections of the recording that are free from artifacts. Here you can see these red lines that are marked, these are blocks of the recording that are marked as uh, bad blocks because they are not useful. Remember, this is an important element, no matter which, what kind of uh, uh, EEG device you are working with. It could be um, four channel, eight channel, 24 channel, uh, uh, 64, 128. It doesn't matter. One of the most important elements of the EEG is that provides a direct estimation of cortical activity and HD QEG provides the same direct estimation, but with high density resolution. With, and you are going to see uh, that in a moment. Here you are looking <clears throat> at the GUI of the uh, informatic environment and also the recording. And uh, here is the topographic view. This is uh, the cap of uh, with uh, the whole electrodes. And this uh, uh, view, it is not, and uh, there are no drawings. 
you have to think of that. These are preconstructions based on two elements. The 128 electrodes coordinates <clears throat> the fiducial points, national, Indian, uh, right and left ear, and the MRI coordinates in order to create 3D models of all the elements that were used in the reality for obtaining this, excuse me, but this the reality, these beautiful recordings. Um, <clears throat> you also can see here the, the, uh, the same head model and the uh, 3D uh, MRI with the reconstruction of the uh, electrodes uh, inside. And here, with the reference of the 5% electrode system, you are looking at the cap. It is um, an important way to, uh, to uh, study the brain because, as you can see, a grand part of the brain is uh, um, under the cap. But there are uh, some uh, um, areas that can't be reached with uh, 128 uh, channels. That's the reason why there are other systems, uh, like, for example, systems with 512 uh, electrodes. And this is the topographic view, uh, nose uh, and ears, <clears throat> the topographic view of the, um, of the cap of the cap they used uh, for this purpose, to obtain the brain signals. And, <coughs> excuse me, this is the MRI with the, uh, with the uh, um, uh, atlas of uh, the Schaffer atlas, uh, the atlas parcellation. Uh, it, it is traditionally used different type of colors since uh, the beginning of this century to identify the different type of atlases. Uh, remember, there are many. This one is the most complete. It, it was identified precisely by the, by the 617 nets. And also, you are uh, looking at the projection of the electrodes, of the 128 electrodes to obtain uh, um, the recordings. And on this, for what? Well, all this to obtain that neural image of DMA. We are going to, do, to, to, to travel from uh, power frequency bands, source imaging, to cortical projections in the MRI viewer. All thanks to the enormous temporal resolution of the EEG. We are not going to look at minutes. We are not uh, going to look at uh, mm, time of recordings of uh, 10, 15 minutes. We are going to look at seconds and to be more precise, at milliseconds. And this is one of the examples. This is the power frequency bands projected again in the brain model reconstructed from the MRI of the subject. Just a brief parenthesis here. In uh, this uh, modern and potent new informatic environment, you can uh, do uh, the following procedure. You can uh, have the, uh, <clears throat> the files uh, of the, the, they are called decon files of the MRI of the patient. It can be um, processed with a specific tool, which is called free software. And it can, can generate the images of the, um, MRI that you see here. This 
files of these uh, uh, MRIs can be loaded here in this neuroinformatic environment. And this neuroinformatic environment I, I, is going to reconstruct the brain and the head model from that MRI. So if your patient has an MRI, you are going to record, obtain the signals of your, of your patients and perform the analysis in the neuroinformatic model of the MRI of your patient. And if you do not have that MRI, uh, then you can use the, um, the different MRIs provided by the neuroinformatic environment that comes from a huge uh, uh, amount of MRIs that are placed in uh, free uh, repositories of different uh, uh, important places like McGill University, UC uh, San Diego, and, <clears throat> and many others. Now, in this um, image, following the, the, the pipeline of NISO et al., we project the power frequency bands in this segment obtain the total power spectrum density with this distribution in the brain theta excuse me uh, delta delta theta alpha look at the distribution of uh, alpha and you can see that it is not only alpha but there are other brain waves that has certain organization in the dma places during the um, so-called resting state of the brain here we have beta gamma one and gamma two And uh, in this view, we can see the uh, lateral view with the same uh, um, power frequency bands uh, distribution in the same order from delta to gamma 2, and also the parcellations according to the Schaffer uh, address. Then we have uh, the, the right hemisphere. And look, uh, Schaffer was. Uh, precisely right. This, can, these images cannot be obtained with a, a low density um, devices. For example, if you are using uh, 20 uh, uh, or 24 channels, you are not going to find that this type of images because of the precision and the high density. If you are not working, uh, if you are working with um, 64, you can have a certain approach, or uh, if you are working with 32, uh, you can be in the middle of the 24 and the 64, but uh, uh, this type of resolution of the precision can only be obtained from 128 or and on and of course with uh, fMRI. So <clears throat> we are looking with very high temporal resolution a different type of uh, networks, not only DMN, in real time, in different type of settings, even out outdoors, there's a, a strong line of research of uh, UCS uh, uh, San Diego, UC San Diego, uh, uh, with that type of line, with a very complex and uh, interesting BCIs. And of course, here, and, and look how precise is the localization of the activity according to that. Let me show you the, uh, the front view. According to Schaffer's and the occipital view, according to Schaffer, 
at least. But there's no the, the ending, uh, this is the beginning. What if we project this power frequency bands into the actual MRI? Well, let's do it, and we found this. We found this, and remember the, the images we've, uh, we, we um, saw at the beginning of this presentation of the uh, uh, fMRI. There is a precise identification, localization in the coronal, the actual, and the sagittal uh, slices of the DMN and its projections. And we can obtain also this. And there you can see how, well, look at this uh, part, which is the precunius, this, this slide with the precunius, and also the um, uh, prefrontal cortex. And also this uh, temporal view, according to uh, uh, Schaffer. This is the, uh, one of the features, well, you can see another one here in different slices. This is the sagittal view. This is the coronal view. Here you can see that DMN heart concentration of uh, power. And since um, you are approaching the front or the back, the occipital uh, uh, areas of the brain, you can identify the distribution of the DMA. That's the reason why it is called large scale, because it involves the whole brain. Uh, we also have uh, uh, small networks, local networks, and also we uh, have um, deep uh, brain areas that uh, get involved with a specific uh, brain networks. But now the actual, uh, actual view in the actual view, we can see the uh, distribution of the high mm, uh, uh, power density concentration uh, near the precunius. This area is the precunius, and also we can see part of the activity in the frontal cortex. In this case, dominant in the um, in the uh, right in the left hemisphere. Uh, mm, well, there are 50 minutes. Uh, uh, right now, I am going to take uh, more time if it is okay to the, um, to the organizers. Now, uh, we are looking at a more precise um, uh, analysis. We have found the specific area of the precunius where the high density is obtained. What is the difference? I would like to, to, to do the comparison between the other systems, um, 64, 32, uh, and 24. Uh, but uh, I, there's no time. We are planning a, a more uh, wide, a detailed seminar or, or workshop related to this type of uh, tool, this uh, neuroinformatic environment. And maybe there we can do this type of comparison because uh, if you look at the, at the images of the uh, low resolution devices, like uh, for example, 2019 20, <clears throat> channels of the traditional 1020 technique of, uh, created by the, uh, the great uh, uh, professor Herbert Jaspers in the, in the 1950s, if you look, uh, look at uh, that type of uh, uh, images, you are going to see uh, uh, the lack of resolution. You are going to see how the uh, DMN gets projected to areas that are not really involved and, do you, and that uh, you do not see 
in the uh, um, in the frame array, and of course you cannot see with uh, 128 uh, channels. This is uh, the coronal view, also in the precunius, because uh, as you may know, when you select a specific point in the in the uh, uh, MRI, it uh, synchronizes uh, all the views. It synchronizes all the views. This is the uh, left hemisphere in a sagittal uh, view, and then then you have the right hemisphere in the sagittal view. As I was telling you, it was more dominant in this case, and only in this case, with this person, the, the, uh, the DMN in that precise moment. Uh, in, in the 491 seconds of recording, more active in the right hemisphere. That kind of a, a, of a specific <clears throat> resolution uh, we have, but uh, we can we can have more. We can have more. Now we um, well first with all these slides we have take a look at uh, uh, the whole uh, DMA. But now let's try to find a specific parcellation of uh, the DMN. Uh, it is called um, uh, LPPL. Uh, that's the name Schaffers uh, gave to this precise Parcellation I am showing you here. So, with a device of this kind, and a new informatic environment of this type, we can identify the activity parcellation by parcellation. To the question, can do we biofeedback of the parcellation, of course we can. That's one of the purpose of the uh, uh, model I presented you at the beginning of the talk. But for that we need uh, to, to have very clean uh, um, <clears throat> recordings, uh, like the one we first at the beginning of this presentation, and the model I presented to you uh, has this task since the beginning. In fact, in, with that kind of research, we are trying to uh, embed it. the first set of convolutional uh, neural, ne neural uh, networks inside the processor as part as the pros as 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 the, as the uh, <clears throat> Uh, basic software of the processor, the microprocessor in the device, in order to pre-process the recordings before it feeds the whole system of uh, biofeed. And even that, there are a lot of uh, cleaning uh, uh, segments in the in the process. So uh, imagine the the the. Uh, level of precision we want to achieve in order to uh, 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 provide or feel the feedback of certain areas of the brain. <clears throat> we are going to take a look at the same, this is the whole MRI. Let's take a look the way it was behaving. Take a look at this one, for example, and this one the way the uh, uh, default, the DMN, was uh, performing during these seconds in the record. In this cytal view, this coronal view. Remember that it is the distribution of the power frequency bands. And in this actual, and uh, you can see that, well, uh, it is, um, I, I would uh, dare to say that it is more precise because of its temporal resolution 
and the type of atlas and parcellations that we are using, and the control of conditions during the recording, that it is much more precise than the static fMRI. And this analysis came from here. At the right, you are uh, um, looking at the graphic user interface, the GUI, uh, these green um, elements are the different parcellations. There are three different uh, groups of parcellation only for the DMN. And there you obtain, you select one uh, uh, of the parcellations, uh, and then you ask the system to find uh, this parcellation in the uh, um, in my right viewer. Of course, I can ask for this, but uh, uh, the idea was to find a not so uh, easy to look or not easy to find uh, parcellation of that of the DMA. And after obtaining that, you are going to see how. Look at this. This is with this type of. Uh, remember the the image. Uh, uh, of the fMRI, the high concentration, but the image <clears throat> was diffuse in the fMRI. Here it is very precise with the different types of power density distributed in the cortex. Here we have the, the, the coronal view. and the axial view. So this is, this is an approach for the analysis of the uh, DMN with uh, the uh, high density QG systems, which are the basis for the new era of uh, biofeedback, QG biofeedback. And <clears throat> just a few introduction, like a trailer, of the next presentation that in the, maybe in the next uh, workshop uh, we will uh, make or, uh, uh, or in the specific workshop about uh, this environment. Mm, uh, speaking about the brain networks, well, we are going to look at uh, from, uh, we're going to make a, a trip from source localization to <clears throat> functional connectivity in this scale, in this case, excuse me, large scale networks, because we are talking about the event, that's all. Here we have, this is another case, and you are going to look at it slightly different. You are not going to see such a great resolution because this was made with 32 channels, not with 128, but even so, you can track The, the same way you can identify in the MRI, you can track the connectivity links between hemispheres and inside one intra-hemisphere, intra-hemisphere, with an, a specific <clears throat> code of the concentration of activity and the images of the drugs. Here you have another example at the 10 Hertz. So, so it is not the same. Well, the alpha, it is from 8 to 12. No, other people say no, 8 to 13. <clears throat> it is not the same talk about in general than to talk a specific about not even hertz, because you can talk also about fractions of hertz. And uh, in, uh, remember, this is only with 32. Uh, just, uh, you have to wait to see the same images with 128. This is eight hertz, this is 10 hertz. Look the differences in connectivity of the same frequency 
of the same person, but a different band segment. And look at the 12 hertz. Strong connectivity, but in different areas. And uh, considering that, you can also obtain the same. You are looking here at the uh, shuffers. Look, there is not the same resolution because it is 32 channels. This is, uh, and fact, uh, you, uh, you can trace all the, all the as we <coughs> saw before, you can trace all the frequency bands or generate the new ones. Considering the 10 frequency bands described up to now, you can, here we have only six, but you can trace the 10 here. You just have to do the program. I didn't because there's a lot of information. So you can, here you have only delta, theta, alpha, the whole beta range, uh, gamma one and gamma two. <coughs> Excuse me. And then here you have, look at the difference between 32 channels and, um, let me see if I do not get into trouble and jump to what, yes, I think I can do it. If I can re return, you just have to forgive me, but I will try. Here it is, here it is the difference, 128 with 32 channels. Well, the, even though there's very useful information. And uh, also, we are going to analyze, um, but this is not now, this is, as I told you, the trailer for the next season. Um, we can analyze uh, hertz or fraction of hertz by fraction or by hertz, by hertz. We can trace the length of the fibers the threshold of the intensity of the connectivity, and we can found all <coughs> bilateral, intra-hemispherical, or out-hemispherical. Here uh, we have another view of the twin hertz of the same persons with the same recording, and we have here the uh, 20 hertz. So that's the new, that's the approach to um, a, a strong uh, approach for um, the connectivity. And now I have to stop sharing. Uh, this is the a strong uh, approach to the uh, um, uh, connectivity analysis, functional connectivity analysis. You just, you just have to analyze it, to imagine this in very specific condition. Uh, of course, uh, 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 eyes closed, eyes open, doing nothing in the uh, so-called resting state. You can imagine this, uh, uh, eyes open in a very specific task, in a neurocognitive task. Uh, you can imagine this in uh, many uh, many other uh, conditions. Um, so, uh, um, this is it. I don't know if you have some questions. Uh, um, please use your mic microphone. Um, uh, I can answer directly instead of uh, 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 taking your time, consuming your time, reading messages. So, uh, feel uh, comfortable. If we have time, I'm sure looking here in WhatsApp um, to uh, Dr. Uh, Ami, maybe uh, she can tell us. Oh, is, um, does anybody have any questions? I do not hear it. Okay, so uh, a special thanks to uh, 
dear Melina and dear Dr. Professor uh, Palacios for you to uh, complete and the perfect presentation. So, uh, does anyone have any question? Please your, your, um, use your microphone. Yes, hello. Hello, sir. Good evening. Hello. Yeah, uh, Satish Adivan is decided from uh, India. Actually, I wanted to know, as you said, uh, to, uh, to get the clear uh, mapping of the brain, we need to get the 64 or above channels, uh, above channels, right? Yeah. Right? Yes. Yes. Uh, it's okay. pretty, to obtain the better resolution, you need to use uh, uh, um, high uh, density devices. Um, okay. You can well. You see, the devices are classified in in two general uh, um, uh, classes: low density, okay. which is from 19 channels and, and lower, and high density, from okay. 32 channels and more. Okay. Okay. Um, so here in in Science Ring, you can found 24 channels, uh, 32 channels. 64 channels, 128 channels. There are also there is also the option of 256. There are other solutions uh, for um, 512 channels, but you need funding for that <laughs> because <laughs> well, you need funding for any kind of of, of devices. But uh, yeah. those one of 512 are really expensive. And uh, for the moment, uh, well, this is the, the geodesic solution because it is a special cut that can uh, take uh, signals from the bottom of the brain because yeah, it involves yeah. the whole uh, head. Yeah. But with yeah. 128 channels and up, uh, you can obtain a pretty good images. Uh, as you can see, pretty specific resolution. Remember, the high temporal resolution of the EEG provides the, 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 the basic field uh, in, in, uh, in the research area and in the, in the therapeutic field, it, can, it do not have competition. Um, there are two basic fields. One is EEG. The other one is, is MEG, magnetoelectroencephalography, that also okay. has the uh, high temporal resolution, but it, it is a big machine Really okay. big machine in a specific set, and it is not so convenient and not, and not so easy to do to work with, uh, like the like the EEG. Yeah. Okay. So uh, minimum which um, uh, which number of channels should be taken to uh, get the uh, proper uh, high density resolution of QEEG? It would be more than thirty two, right? Yes, uh, well, um, if I understood your, your question, you you uh, better work with uh, 64. You can work okay. from 32, but I don't, I do not advise it. Uh, okay. I, it's better 64. Okay, okay, sure. Sir. Okay. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Any other question? Can we talk here about uh, biofeedback and neurofeedback, both are uh, different? Like, uh, uh, well, the general field is biofeedback, you know? In the 90s, a uh, certain group of uh, American uh, uh, therapists uh, coined the name of neurofeedback because yeah. they were working with only uh, the biofeedback of brain waves. Brain waves, yeah. The, the general term is biofeedback. It doesn't matter. It is peripheral, like EMG, ECG, uh, temperature, finger temperature, whatever, or EEG. Okay. okay. Uh, <clears throat> depending on of the approach, you can use classical neurofeedback, which is uh, one channel, two channel, four channel, eight channel. Okay. to quantitative EEG, which is 
from IT channels and and on. And on. Okay, uh, 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 but uh, quantity PET is only for uh, for 19 channels, as yeah. the people from this area call it uh, uh, quantitative EEG by fever. But they work only with 19 uh, channels. They do uh, connectivity, but only with 19 channels, which is, as you can see, not the same thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, um, but uh, the time is changing. Uh, devices are cheaper and cheaper and evolving. Yeah, yeah. evolving. So, so uh, in the near future, HD QEEG is going to replace uh, the traditional quantitative EEG by your feedback of 19 channels. We are going to That's see that in the coming years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if there are no more questions. Okay. Thank you so much, dear professor. And uh, now, actually, I will say goodbye until tomorrow and the dear participant i hope you also are satisfied with today's webinar and the webinar will start tomorrow at the same time and the link will be posted in the group so thank you very much and have a good day goodbye